From the earliest productions in cinematic history to films that were actually trying to combat racism, let's dive into a list of the worst cases of blackface in film. Hollywood has been outright racist at multiple instances. One of the most significant instances was the release of The Birth of a Nation. Did you know that it was the first ever Hollywood blockbuster? It was released back in 1915 and was directed by D.W. Griffith. The film paints a totally distorted and romanticized picture of the Ku Klux Klan. It portrays them as the heroic protectors of a white America threatened by black people running wild. But one of the most distasteful parts of the film was the use of blackface. Many black people were portrayed by white people. The movie was so outrageous and offensive that the NAACP tried to get it banned from theaters, but their efforts failed. Despite its racist message, the film was widely successful and set the standard for future blockbusters to come. It's pretty shocking to think that such a blatantly racist movie was so popular and influential, but it's important to acknowledge that Hollywood, or the entertainment industry in general, has a dark history. Films like Loquitia are another example of the said dark past. It's pretty offensive no matter how you slice it. Renee, you do a great job with personal appearances, but the therapy is just not your thing. Who cares? I'll pretend, just like you do. Basically, the plot follows a white man pretending to be a black woman in order to land a gig as a talk show host. But here's the thing. The character Joe, played by actor Greg Seville, takes it to a whole new level of messed up. He's essentially doing blackface by portraying a caricature of black women. And honestly, that's just not okay. It's offensive and insensitive to the black community. And it's downright disrespectful to the history of blackface and its harmful effects. But not all films on this list are like that. There are also those whose creators and actors had the best of intentions, but ended up promoting the same racism they had set out to tackle. This was the case with The Jazz Singer. In the 1927 musical, Al Jolson played a young man who dreams of becoming a jazz singer despite his Jewish family's disapproval. However, Jolson's portrayal of his character involves him donning blackface, which is now recognized as a horrific act of racial appropriation. At the time of the film's release, Jewish and black writers actually praised Jolson's performance. But as racial discussions progressed over the years, Jolson's career became increasingly contentious. Interestingly, Jolson had a complex relationship with the black community. While he did appropriate black performances through his use of blackface, he also had black friends in the entertainment industry, such as Bill Bojangles Robinson. He spoke out against racial discrimination as well. Jolson even saw similarities between Jewish and black suffering, which he highlighted in the film Big Boy. However, his use of blackface in The Jazz Singer is now seen as straight up wrong. Good thing Jolson had a good tie with the black community and was able to get himself and his film out of serious disaster, because that certainly wasn't the case with 1986's Soul Man. It's a movie that didn't sit well with many people, and for good reason. Well, sir, to be honest, I just couldn't help murmuring my approval of your opening remarks. The film follows a privileged white boy who uses affirmative action to get into college, a scholarship that was intended only for black students. To transform himself into a black man, he overdoses on tanning pills, believing that he will have an easy time navigating the world as a person of color. However, it's only when he becomes black that he realizes the harsh realities of racism. Getting pulverized by drunken bigots. And you expect me to come the premise of the film is absolutely ridiculous and offensive, not to mention the blackface that the main character uses to portray a black person. This kind of portrayal perpetuates racist ideas about affirmative action and displays a clear naivete about prejudice and racism. Needless to say, critics hated the film. The NAACP and UCLA were among the groups that spoke out against it. Critics tore apart the film for its poor writing and stylistic choices. It's a good thing this film was left in the past, but Hollywood has tried to highlight racism by being racist itself many times. And it's not just a thing of the past, the same thing can be seen in the more recent Tropic Thunder. It's a satirical action comedy film that was released in 2008. I'm trying to get home, man. Got a big job coming up next to you. Oh, yeah? The movie stars Ben Stiller, Robert Downey Jr., and Jack Black. It's about a group of actors who are filming a war movie in the middle of the jungle. One of the most controversial things about the movie is Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Kirk Lazarus. He plays an Australian method actor who undergoes a surgical procedure to change his skin color. He plays the role of an African-American sergeant. This means that Downey Jr. is essentially wearing blackface throughout the entire movie. You're more shredded than a Julian salad, man. 
What's the secret, dude? The dying. Dying, yeah. yeah. The use of blackface in Tropic Thunder has caused a lot of controversy and criticism. The movie itself addresses this controversy in a way that's both clever and thought-provoking. Throughout the film, the characters struggle with issues of race and representation. I know who I am! I'm a dude playing a dude disguised as another dude! And the use of blackface is presented as an extreme and misguided attempt at method acting. Either way, there's many ways to highlight the issues of extreme method acting and racism that aren't racist. If only they paid more attention to making more creative ways of addressing these issues, they wouldn't have to resort to blackface. Because the same case of, but they had good intentions, happened with Bamboozled. Why don't you let Man 10 take you back to a simpler time? A time when men was men? The movie is directed by Spike Lee that talks about how some people use blackface in entertainment. The story is about a TV boss named Pierre Delacroix who creates a TV show that looks like an old fashioned show that made fun of black people. He wanted to get fired from his job, but instead the show became popular and many people got upset. Because your hands are just as bloody as mine. I know where I made my big mistake. The movie talks about how blackface was a way of making fun of black people a long time ago. It was very hurtful and made them look stupid. In Bamboozled, Spike Lee shows how people still make fun of black people in a more sneaky way. The movie makes us think about how we can stop people from using harmful stereotypes in TV and movies. It's important to talk about these things so that we realize we're doing something wrong. But the issue here again is that they end up using blackface to portray its harmfulness. Isn't it a bit hypocritical? Another movie that does this but is actually quite more nuanced is Black Like Me. The film is based on a true story of a white journalist named John Howard Griffin. He underwent a medical treatment to darken his skin. Sorry to see you leave so soon. Well, I never planned to stay. I've got a long ways to go. And then traveled through the American South disguised as a black man in the late 1950s. The use of blackface in Black Like Me is different from the traditional form of blackface that was popular in the early 20th century. Instead of using makeup to create exaggerated and insulting stereotypes of black people, the movie uses the technique of race reassignment to make a white actor look like a black person. While the intentions behind Black Like Me were good, the use of blackface in this movie has been criticized by some people. Some argue that that it reinforces the idea that white people can simply become black by changing their appearance. This ignores the complex social and historical experiences that come with being black. However, others argue that Black Like Me is an important film that highlights the reality of racism in America. It also challenges viewers to confront their own prejudices and assumptions about race. But like I said before, there's so many ways of doing so. There's no shortage of black writers and actors who can craft up stories of their own communities, maybe give them the chance to do it. So there you have it. These were some of the worst instances of blackface in films.